Before I start my presentation, I uh, thank uh, the organizing committee of uh, ECO LSI uh, 43 for this uh, wonderful opportunity to share uh, some of my research uh, works with uh, uh, fellow linguists. And uh, in this presentation, I'll be focusing on uh, coordination in uh, Iranian and uh, Indo Aryan uh, languages, uh, mainly the older varieties. Uh, and uh, I'll try to exclusively focus on the enclitic, the coordinator cha, uh, found in the older Western records as well as uh, the Sanskrit records. And uh, this uh, happens to be a part of uh, an ongoing research uh, on uh, coordination in Indian languages. And uh, uh, I've, I've been looking at uh, contact induced changes in terms of coordination patterns found in uh, different uh, language families of India and especially uh, I am uh, as of now exploring the influence of uh, Indo-Aryan languages uh, mainly on uh, the Dravidian languages and also to a lesser extent on uh, uh, Mullah languages and tibeto burman languages. So in the previous uh, two uh, research reports uh, I presented uh, in the first uh, report I presented diachronic data from uh, uh, Kannada Dravidian language on the development of uh, monocinetic coordination and uh, I tried to argue that uh, uh, this is a result of uh, contact uh, extensive contact with uh, the older Indo-Aryan languages Subsequently, in uh, another uh, work, I looked at uh, the uh, monosynthetic uh, coordinators available in uh, uh, Munda languages, and uh, uh, I presented data uh, wherein uh, it was reflected that uh, the Munda languages have borrowed extensively from uh, the Indo Aryan languages and also from the Davidian languages in terms of monosynthetic coordinators. And in continuation, uh, in this presentation, I'll just uh, focus on one particular uh, aspect of uh, Indo-Aryan uh, and uh, Iranian coordination. Uh, before uh, we get into the language family, uh, we, uh, if you look at the typology of coordination, uh, there are mainly two varieties, asyndetic variety and syndetic variety. Asyndetic variety means no use of any explicit coordinator. We don't use any explicit coordinator to coordinate constituents. And as against a synthetic variety, we have a lot of synthetic varieties. So when we do typology of languages in terms of uh, coordination, we in fact we don't look at us we don't look at the synthetic pattern. Rather, we uh, look at the synthetic pattern to uh, classify languages and. Uh, under synthetic variety, we have two types, uh, monosynthetic and uh, bisynthetic. Uh, monosynthetic is an instance where we have only one coordinator conjoining two constituents, and the coordinator may either sit with the second coordinate or it may go with the first coordinate. And uh, in terms of monosynthetic coordination, uh, there are three patterns attested in the world languages. And uh, as against that, uh, in the by synthetic coordination, we get uh, four patterns uh, wherein we have a coordinator going with the coordinate. If we look at uh, the classification of Iranian languages, first of all, uh, as many of us already know, the classification of Iranian languages these days have been contested. Uh, because of uh, uh, emerging evidence to dispute the subgroupings. And uh, I have adopted the classification found in Martinez and uh, uh, Van uh, 2014, wherein they uh, follow the traditional uh, classification of the Iranian languages. So the old Western going into younger Western, younger Western splitting into Western and Eastern. What is of interest here is that 
we have the language Persian, which is attested across three different periods. So we get old Persian data, we get uh, middle Persian data, and we also get modern Persian data. And uh, as of now, uh, among the Iranian languages, uh, Persian happens to be the only language carrying data across three different proposed stages. Now, as I can say, uh, if you look at uh, the Indo-Aryan languages, we uh, get into a very different problem. Uh, the problem is to problem is the subgrouping of the new Indo-Aryan languages. Uh, and uh, here I have uh, followed uh, Tuliko, uh, who, uh, who is quite uh, vocal in his uh, uh, subgroupings and proposals. And uh, we can also read the recent literature uh, in Hawk and Elena Bashir, where they again discuss this problem of subgrouping the new Indo-Aryan languages. The old Indo-Aryan patterns, at least the old Indo-Aryan patterns, are not as contested as the new Indo-Aryan patterns. OK, so ac across these two language families, uh, we find uh, this article Cha, which if you look at uh, the literature on uh, Indo-Aryan languages and uh, as well as uh, Indo-Iranian uh, languages, Iranian languages, we uh, find linguists calling them, calling this enclitic Cha. And the pattern is something like A, B, and coordinator. So that coordinator, that is the place of Ch. So it follows both the coordinates. It sits in the final position. And uh, apparently, it has reflexes in other Indo-European languages. And uh, it can be reconstructed to Proto-Indo-European as well. Let us uh, take uh, uh, the examples from Sanskrit. Uh, and uh, this is uh, an example where Chaya involves itself in uh, clausal coordination. Ramaha agachati gachati cha. That is, Rama comes and goes. And again, the position of cha does not change. It uh, comes in a word final, po is a clausal final position. And uh, the Linguists are very particular about the position of cha. They repeatedly say across the language families, they repeatedly say that cha cannot occur in the word initial or clause initial position. Again, uh, this is an instance of uh, nominal coordination, Rama, Lakshmana, cha. Again, the coordinator comes at the end. However, uh, there are instances where uh, the enclitic repeats itself. For example, if you look at this data in three, Ramascha Lakshmanascha, wherein the enclitic has gone with the first coordinate that is Rama, and it has also gone with the second coordinate that is Lakshmana. So, and it means the same thing, Rama and Lakshmana, and then. Uh, as against uh, the first variety, the second variety is Rama Lakshmanascha. Rama Lakshmanascha is what we expect the coordinator to appear at the end. However, if we look at the data, there are instances where Cha occurs more than one time. And this is uh, another instance where Cha comes in the second position. Kuttini Cha. Shashita, Gopi, Cha, Nisarita, Kandarpa Ketu Cha, Puraskrata. That is, the worker was punished and the coward's wife was banished and Kandarpa Ketu was honored. So, in each case, the coordinate comes in the second position. This is again a usual position for this cha in the attested records. Now, when we compare this uh, set with the Iranian set, uh, for example, letter number five, Ahura Mazda Manacha. So this is Ahura Mazda and me, 
and here Ch sits in the last position as expected. But as against that, we also have patterns like Manascha Ushicha, where the enclitic Ch goes with the first coordinate that is thought, as well as the second coordinate that is understanding. Now, in the greater uh, Indo-European belt, uh, I have just brought this data to compare it with the bigger family. Uh, if you look at uh, data 7, uh, parents and children, uh, again, as expected, uh, the reflex of Ch, that is Ko, goes with the second coordinate. And uh, this is, uh, I have uh, verbatim produced the comment of uh, a Latin grammarian, he says, Co is an enclitic and is appended always to the second of the two words connected. Now, I cross checked this data with a, a Sanskritist, and that person partially agreed with me. And uh, this data, I have not produced this data, this data is published data from a different uh, person. And this particular Sanskrit is said, uh, in some instances, Ch can come, Ch can occur with all the coordinates, uh, coordinates but typically uh, they expect Ch to occur only once. Now, subsequently, when we come to the new Indian languages and the Iranian languages, we find that this ch is not attested in the languages. For example, we, uh, we may take uh, the Iranian languages, Dari, Kurdish, Tajik, or Dimili, or Baluchi, or Persian, or Pashto, or Ormuri. Apparently, there are no reports on ch. Likewise, in the modern Indo-Aryan languages as well, apparently uh, the clitic ch is lost. And in fact, in fact, uh, Bloch says the modern Indo-Aryan languages lost the clitic ch and developed a heavier co coordinator. Now, when we take this issue with the uh, types of coordination patterns that we have in the Indo uh, in the Indian languages, uh, we will have to re-examine the bisyndetic pattern available for the Indo Indo Aryan language Indo Aryan languages. So, for Dravidian. Uh, we have the bisyndic pattern attested, and for Mundo, uh, Munda languages, we, as of now, there are no attested reports, and for Tibetan Burman languages, we do have um, bisyndic uh, coordination attested. But when it comes to the Indo Aryan uh, languages, it looks like either we have to say that uh, it was a contact induced, it was a contact induced change, which is very difficult to say because we have reflexes in other Indo-European languages as well, and we have to say that subsequently it lost, and the new Indo-Aryan language Sinhalese developed a bisyndetic pattern because of contact with the Dravidian languages. So uh, with this, uh, I have come to the end of my presentation, and uh, these are the references for this particular report.